In this lecture, we are going to study Total Order Broadcast. Total Order Broadcast is an abstraction that can be used by nodes of a distributed system to broadcast messages in an ordered way. Let's take an example. Let's assume that in our distributed systems, we have three processes, and I will call them either processes, machines, or nodes. So in that case, P1, P2, and P3. We are studying a broadcasting algorithm, which means that whenever a process sends a message, it sends it to all other processes. So in total order broadcast protocols, what happens is that all processes deliver the same set of messages in the same order. What this means is assume that in this system, two processes send a message. For instance, P1 broadcasts message 1, M1 to P2 and P3. And process P2 broadcasts message M2 to P3 and P1. If processes use a total order broadcast protocol, they will all deliver the same set of messages in the same order. That can be either M1 before M2 or M2 before M1. Let's consider that this is the second case. So P3 will deliver M2, then M1. P2 will deliver M2, then M1, and the same for P1. So now that I explain you the intuition behind total order broadcast protocol, the question is, why do we use such protocols? The very common uh, example is a state machine replication. So total order broadcast protocols are used as a basis to implement state machine replication. State machine replication, SMR for short, is used to implement systems, distributed systems that tolerate faults. The idea behind state machine replication is that rather than running a single instance of a service, so for instance, that service might be a database, we use multiple instances of the same database. All these instances are called replicas, and the idea is that every replica should have the same state. To ensure that, one common way to do is to make sure that all replica execute the same update request in the same order. So for instance, W1 and W2 on each database. This is achieved by running a total order broadcast protocol across databases. That protocol is used in the following way. Clients issuing requests that do not modify the state of the databases will receive replies from the database they contacted. Clients issuing requests modifying the state of the databases, meaning write requests, won't get an instantaneous reply. Rather, the database will use the total order broadcast protocol to broadcast the request to all the databases. As we've seen before, total order broadcast protocols guarantee that all databases will deliver the same set of requests in the same order. So in our case, W1, then W2, W1, then W2, W1, then W2. So I explain you the intuition. I explain you why total order broadcast protocol are useful. I will now present you the formal specification of these protocols and give you one example of such a protocol. So let's start with the specification. First, what are the assumptions we are going to make? We assume that we have a fixed set of known processes. We assume that processes can only fail by crashing. We assume that processes communicate using perfect communication channel. Let me remind you that a perfect communication channel ensures that when a correct process sends a message to a correct process, this latter will deliver the message. Finally, we will assume in the algorithm I will present you that processes have a perfect failure detector. A perfect failure detector is a service that runs at every process and that outputs the list of failed processes. Perfect failure detector is characterized by the following two properties, strong accuracy, which means that if a process is suspected to have crashed, then it means that it has actually crashed, and strong completeness, meaning that all processes that crash will eventually be suspected. The interface that is used by processes using a total order broadcast protocol is the following. Processes can broadcast messages using a broadcast method that takes as parameter a message M. Then the protocol implements an upcall called deliver, 
that is used by the protocol to deliver a message M sent by a sender S to the process executing the protocol on that given node. Using these two methods, we specify total order broadcast using four properties, validity, integrity, agreement, and total order. The validity property states that if a correct process P broadcasts a message M, then it will eventually deliver M. The integrity property states that for any message M, any correct process P delivers M at most once, and only if M was previously broadcast by some correct process Q. The agreement property states that if a correct process P delivers a message M, then every correct process Q eventually delivers M. Finally, the total order property states that for any two messages M and M prime, if any process P delivers M before M prime, then no process Q delivers M prime before M. So let me now present you a very simple protocol that implements uh, this specification. This protocol is called a fixed sequencer total order broadcast. Let us take an example with four processes, P1, P2, P3, and P4. Remember that we made the assumption that we have a fixed set of known processes, meaning every process knows the list of other processes. Let's also remember that every process uses a failure detector, which is perfect, which means that failures of processes will accurately be detected. Using this perfect failure detector, it is very easy to implement leader election. Processes simply take as leader the first process in their list of alive processes. This simply assumes that processes are ordered, which can easily be used this simply assumes that processes are ordered, which can easily be achieved by, for instance, using the IP address of the machine as identifier. So to explain you this protocol, let me take the example of a system with four processes. Using their perfect failure detectors, processes can easily elect a process called sequencer. So in this example, I assume that P1 is the sequencer process. Whenever a process wants to broadcast a message, it sends that message to the sequencer. The sequencer will rebroadcast the message together with a sequence number. Processes use this sequence number to guarantee that they all deliver the same messages in the same order. The algorithm I presented you works if there are no failures. So let me now explain you what happens when the sequencer fails. So first, remember that processes execute a perfect failure detector, which will ensure that P2, P3, and P4, in our example, will all detect the crash of P1. As soon as one of these processes detects the crash, it sends a message to all other processes. Roughly speaking, this message contains the state of the process, meaning the messages it delivered so far and the messages it received from the sequencer that it did not yet deliver. When a process has received such a message from all other processes, it can update its state according to the states of other processes and start using the next sequencer in the list. So in that case, P2 will become the sequencer and P3 and P4 will use it to sequence the messages. Of course, that protocol is one example of total order broadcast protocol. There are many, many protocols that have been designed. Some use moving sequencers, some don't use sequencers at all and rely on logical clocks. Uh, some make additional assumptions like real-time clocks and so on and so on. A very good survey written by Defago and Shipper in 2004 lists more than 50 such protocols.